the Servant Leader Coaches Bible Study. I am your host, Coach Chelsea. And y'all, I'm going to be biased today. I do not care. I always say I don't like to be biased, but we have a Tallahassee connection right now. We have a hometown Florida State Seminole connection right now on the podcast. I'm super excited. She's been on the Servant Leader before in a motherhood capacity for me as I prepared. We were laughing because I sat here and said, my baby girl just turned six months. Where does the time go? But today we have servant leader Brooke Wyckoff with us. Y'all, I'm hyped because she is now the new head coach at Florida State for the women's basketball team. And she is here to talk about faith, sports, servant leadership in this new appointment. So I'm not going to prolong on time. I want to let you know, Brooke, I'm super excited. And I thank you, though, because I can only imagine how much your calendar just poofed up. Now you probably thinking it's like, when did that meeting get there? But I thank you for carving out time to chat with us today. So I'm going to pass the torch to you to say hello to our listeners and we'll get this conversation started. Hello, everybody. Hello, Chelsea. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. This was something that as we've been talking the last few weeks or more than a few weeks that I have been wanting to get to. And because it is such an honor for me to to be here to talk to you, you inspire me. Um, So I'm just looking forward to this conversation and just really, really excited to be here with everybody. <laughs> no, for sure. And it's, it's amazing because too, you know, I was laughing when we were trying to talk and get these dates down because I was like, oh, it's the final four and all this, but I was like, uh-uh, it does not matter what greater time they'll hear it on the podcast when they're traveling back, they'll hear it right now when they're getting ready in between what they're doing in these sessions, but we gotta have it. And I'm super excited. I was telling you before you came on and I'm pretty sure everybody else too, when the buzz came through that you were named the head coach. One, I wasn't surprised, to be honest with you. I didn't know which direction they were going in, but I was like, they if she wants it, they got to give it to my girl. And I was super excited about that, just watching you, right? And I told you before, I am the player turned coach. So yes. I know what type of, uh, you know, type of pride that gives you outside of the extent of where you are. Can you talk a little bit about just this new appointment that isn't really so new for you, right? How God kind of carved that. He kind of gave you a little taste of it first. Let's talk about this new appointment and what it means to be an alumna turned Mm -hmm. at Florida State University. Well, like I was saying when we were talking before we started, um, it, it, I, I'm pinching myself uh, in between all the calls and all the things that have to happen and the, the frenzy of, of taking this new job. I mean, I am just so blessed. And, and the coolest part about it is that I've seen God through it all, like just seeing his divine plan and the way he has set it up without you know, me had knowing anything, of course, as we never really know, like what he's doing, but he, he works it all for an amazing good. And that's, that's been the coolest part that, you know, 25 years ago, 26 years ago. Now I made the decision to be a seminal, just coming down here from Ohio to play basketball. And now the head coach, it's just, it really is a surreal moment. I'm so blessed and excited, but just the coolest part is just to see how, you know, God has control of our lives. He has his hand on our lives. And, and I'm, I'm thankful because if I was in control, I wouldn't be sitting here. That's for sure. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't even want to begin to talk about what happens when he's not in control. Okay. <laughs> right. Listen, because isn't it something how we think we know best? I was talking to a friend about that today. It's so funny how we will try to do it first. Um, mm. Mm. A servant leader came on last week and it was so funny. She was like, it's amazing how we try it first. We try to consult everyone first. And then we come back and be like, God, what you think? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you come to me now. You go to all the imperfection avenues and then you come to me asking me what I think when I know okay but we mm-hmm. do that like we do that and I think it's so amazing and watching like you said his divine power to walk through you you know even when I think about you know how you had to step into the interim head coach role right mm-hmm. I knew then what he was doing he's <laughs> amazing like when we you probably like okay let's get this done but not even thinking I'm sure flashing back now it's amazing how God will do that just give you a little taste first before yes. he win it that's amazing to me Absolutely. yeah it is it, it just looking back I love that perspective like the hindsight perspective of just seeing all the ways that he's ordered all my steps to to prepare me you know like who gets that opportunity to to 
be in on the sidelines running the show for a year but then like you know the the world would say or someone would be like oh you're ready to be a head coach like why don't you just jump into it or why don't why wouldn't you just be the the next head coach right then what the opportunity that to have coach suit come back and me go back into that assistant coaching role i grew that much more because mm-hmm. i had now lived experiences as a head coach and I, they were fresh in my mind that I got to go. And now as they're happening to coach Sue and she's dealing with them, I got to observe a pro who had been doing it for 25 years, how she was dealing with these situations, having lived them myself. And so that experience was amazing and prepared me even further to be able to step into this, this now, um, you know, by having those years set up the way that I would never have thought of something like that. Like who would, you know, who would think like, oh, that's right. cool. you know? Um, and so I'm just, again, just so thankful to see God's hand through the whole thing. It's amazing. You know, I teach as well. And I teach mm-hmm. AP Environmental Science is one of my subjects. And we talk about, we read an excerpt all the time, tragedy of the commons, right? Mm -hmm. And I wish that it was fine and in tune with law and curriculum to bridge the gap to believers of tragedy of the commons to the word of God. And I'm going to tell you why. So what we talk about in the commons is the common folk, right? The people, the environment, us. Mm -hmm. And the tragedy is explaining what we do to affect the environment in a negative way. And one of the things we mention all the time is the invisible hand. That's us, what we do. Mm-hmm. It's amazing when I tell the, you know, the people in my life about that aspect of my class and I can speak to believers because I said, isn't it amazing how the invisible hand, that's us, tries to navigate things in the commons. And the Lord's like, I got this. My <laughs> hand is in it. I created it. I know I got you. Take your hand off. Thank and take you. What happens when we take our hand off? Exactly. And it's so like in this job in coaching where there's so little that you can control, as you know, like there's so much happening, you know, just even in the the microcosm of a basketball game, like there's a million things happening out there at once in the game that you can call a play. You can tell players what to do when things are, when the game slows down, but like, there are so many things that you cannot control as a coach. And then outside of the basketball game, like when you're managing a program, managing a team, a million things you can't control. It is so nice to be able to remember in those moments, (laughs) I'm not in control. I don't need to have, you know, like I don't need to be affecting any of this it's already being taken care of i can i can trust that something that seems like it's going wrong or something that seems like this isn't would this isn't what would be ideal right now i'm trusting that this is all part of the plan it is all going in a direction that i don't understand i don't need to understand right now but i know it's for the good and that that to me having the faith that i have you know I, I don't know how I could coach without it, <laughs> to be honest, because Come on. <laughs> I'd be going crazy, you know, like, how do you, if you don't believe in, in that there's something bigger beyond just what we're trying to do on a day-to-day basis, then woo, it's, it's going to be really, really tough. But isn't that amazing how he always says that pretty much all things going to work together for the, yes. Good. Yes, but yes. then that next part, do you love them? Now you got to answer me. I'd be like, do you love them? Yeah, I love them. Okay. So right. that's what it is. All things work together for the good of them who love him and are called according to his purpose. And it means that in the midst of those things, that everything's going to be easy. Right. It doesn't mean that, right? And I think sometimes we misconstrue the word. We think it's going to be peaches and roses all the time. Yes. Talking to um, servant leader Portia uh, Portia Hoek the other day, and she was saying, you know, I love how the word tells us no weapons formed against me shall prosper. But you need to understand this. He didn't say they won't form. Right. Exactly. They won't prosper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. They're going to be there. You're going to feel them. You're going to feel them. Right. And, I, and I'm and i always reminded, though, you know, yeah. by the time we can't pick and choose the parts of scripture that we want to abide by. Right. They sound mm-hmm. and they feel good. Right. right. We have to yeah. have it all. But it's in those storm moments, it's in those obstacles, it's in those trial moments. You know, as the word says, trials work with patience and patience work with hope. And so it's in those moments that we're able to do better, learn better, sharpen our iron in order to be ready to sharpen someone else. 
And so talking about sharpening that iron, you do that a lot. Mm. You do that so many different capacities. But one of the ones I want to talk about is how we kind of connected is you are um, one of the individuals who helped found this amazing uh, entity called Moms and Coaching. And Mm. definitely took me in. You embraced me when I was pregnant with my little girl who's now six months. I want you to talk a little bit about as a coach, right? As a mother, how you're able to put all those things in order, handle your business, being mom first, but also when coaching is an aspect and then creating this forum to be able to assist other coaches that do the same thing. Yeah. Well, it, it's been an amazing experience. Like that, not just, as you know, we were talking about too, like being a mother is so awesome. It's the best thing ever. Like you can't explain it until you do it, but the, the, <laughs> so the true. <laughs> you know, like, but the next coolest thing is like this, this ability to connect with a group of people that has that in common, like connecting with other mothers who understand, um, the great part about being a parent, uh, the difficult parts about being a parent, all the, you know, all of it, it just gives you another, you know, it, it opens up your world. It broadens your horizons to connect and, and really go deep with, with a group of people, um, that share something in common. And that's what, what I really needed. I knew I needed that when I was pregnant and in this job where there aren't, you know, well, I I shouldn't say there's not a lot of mothers. There are a lot of mothers coaching, but you don't always know who they are um, in this job. You don't, when you're out on the road, you don't, a lot of people don't have their kids with them. You don't know Um, when you're obviously coaching games, nobody's kids are with them. So unless you really seek out other mothers or get into conversation, you don't really know. So it can feel lonely. Um, You know, if if no one on your staff is a parent or if there's another, not another female parent on your staff or it's like, man, am I doing this all by myself? Like, this is really hard. The schedule is demanding. Like you, the hours of a basketball coach are not normal hours. Um, and so I really felt like, okay, I'm going to need support. Like I started to meet people on the road that when it was obvious that I was pregnant, the mothers came when they came out of the woodwork. <laughs> They're like, Hey, Oh my gosh, congratulations. Like I have two kids or oh mine are this and you need just make sure you do this or make sure you take time for that. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I need. We need more of this. I want more. I want more. It was almost a selfish thing. Like, where are all these women? I want to see them. I want to talk to them. And how cool would it be? You know, in talking with these moms, it it became apparent that a lot of them didn't have a huge support system with other moms, you know, like, and I was thinking how cool would it be if we could all just get in a room or get on a group chat or get on a zoom and connect Mm -hmm. and talk about the things that are hard the things that are wonderful um give ideas give advice so that's that's what it's been it's been such an amazing experience for me just personally to connect with all these women be inspired by them when I'm having hard moments, like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm just treading water here. I am barely keeping above water with all the stuff that's on my mind with, with parenting and coaching. I think of those women. I, th- I literally like picture those women in the room and say, they're all doing it. They're all making it through. I got this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not the sure. only one it's being done. You got it. So, um, and then I just think, you know, for, as a group, like to keep, it's an example that, Hey, we have all of these women that are doing this women that are mothers can coach at Mm -hmm. any level, at any level, like it, it it is being done and it's being done well. So for all these administrators that hesitate when it comes to hiring women with children, for young women who don't have children yet and are thinking, man, am I going to be able to do both? I really like coaching, but I want a family. Like, I don't know that example. Like to me, that's another thing that, that outward, like we, we love to talk within ourselves, but now moms and coaching, just like being an example to further women in coaching and those opportunities Mm -hmm. is, is so special to me as well. That's, that's one of the things I'm most proud of is that, you know, Hey, we're telling you, moms and coaching, this can be done. Okay. No limits. Yes. Let's go. And I think that's that's the key part, right? In that, in that the true mark 
the true action of a servant leader, right? When you wow. see a need, right? Christ brings that need to you. You mm-hmm. see, and you don't stand idly by. You don't say, "Well, I mean, hmm, well, yeah, yeah," maybe need, but maybe that's for somebody else to do. You step up to that plate, and you know it was something that was necessary for you. And because it's a need, you occupy and you fill the space for that need. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Because right now, you all poured into me, you know, mm-hmm. and I and I think that that is the biggest thing that's so humbling. I know just from my side how that schedule is when I was pregnant and now that Hendrix is here and trying to figure it all out. And the way you all embraced me was like, yeah, sure, no problem. We got you. It was just amazing. And I feel that what you've cultivated and having more people like that, it takes that coach. It takes that new mom that's like, uh, yeah, I may have to put the coaching reins down for a second. And it lets them think again, like I can do both. I can have both. It is possible. Absolutely. And it is, it's, I love when opportunities that just come to us. And I, I believe like you're saying, they are God given, like they are, Mm -hmm. they are put in our path for a reason. It's so easy to step into them. Like a lot of times it's like, it just is the right, it's just like, wow. Like, yeah, of course, this is what I'm going to do. Like, this makes so much sense. Never would have thought I'd be doing it, but now of course, you know, and that's what the the coolest thing about moms and coaching was. It's just, it happened that way. It was, it was put in my path. And, um, you know, just to be honest, like me getting pregnant was totally unexpected and unplanned. And, and the way that like this came out of that, like something Mm -hmm. that could have been that, that was almost like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, God was like, I'm going to show you what you're going to do. Like what we're going to do, this is going to be mm-hmm. something bigger than you ever could have imagined out of, again, something that was like, could have been looked at as like, oh my gosh, this is like a hindrance or a, you know, a, a roadblock or something like that. I mean, it's just, it's so cool to see how he put those things in front of me and made it so easy to walk into those things working together for the good again yes exactly <laughs> i tell you i they, of course it just as worse said they're like beauty for ashes right yes it is truly what it is so he would take something that i thought that was just going to end me that mm-hmm. was going to, was going to stop me he said you know what i got you because remember you love me yes. i'm all those things together for good and you just wait and see you just yeah. what i have in store and now you're helping all of these women including me and i yeah. thank you for that Yes. Oh, I love it. Yes. He's, he's so good. He's so good. He is. Don't you get me started. He is. And so, you know, in his being good, right. And one of the things that I love to talk about in his being good, you know, so often, even though this is the servant leader coaches Bible setting, we talk, that is the whole point of this platform where, you know, individuals like you, you know, they look and they say, oh, that, that's coach Wyckoff. Wait, she, she's sitting here openly talking about this man named God named, named, and his son, Jesus Christ. And okay, yes. maybe, just maybe, I, maybe I will now take a listen and take heed to what, you know, people have been telling me. And, and I think that's the beauty of it. But even in him being good, good there are moments in our life where it doesn't feel good. Mm. It's in our life where things kind of knock us off our rocker. You know, and when you don't have that foundation, when you have not accepted him, when you don't have him in your life, it makes it hard for you to understand that fact. Twofold, can you talk a little bit about just your Christian journey? You know, some people are young, some people, you know, found him at a later point in time. Can you talk a little bit about, as my grandma would say, how you learn to know him for yourself? And to give uh, just just a word of encouragement to that person who, who, you know, it's, it's a little bit harder for them because for some reason I hear people saying he's good, but everything around me just doesn't look, see, or feel good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, I was born into a really strong Christian home. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, I obviously, and I, I accepted Christ at the age of six and I fully remember what I was doing. I remember the moment I, I knew what was happening and the the gravity of it, Um, you know, but, but I think, I think that there's, 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 (laughs) it's amazing to have a foundation like that at an early age. There are downsides to it only in the sense that just like a a potential downside and, and in the sense of like, we want to, when we're becoming independent, 
and want to explore the world and all those things it's like that becomes like that's the norm it was like my life was transformed but not in this miraculous way that you see other people like come to know christ and like they've been going through such hard things and and now they found him and it's like this amazing <laughs> transformation like i'd always lived with that and i took it for granted um and i and i you know, so there's been so many moments in my life and there still are obviously that I am far from perfect. I'm far from, um, who I want to be as a faithful Christian follower of Christ, <laughs> but, and I've, so I've gone in and out and up and down with, with choices I've made and, and, and all of those things. But what I'm most thankful for is that I always had that foundation. I never wavered in, in my faith and knowing who I was in that ever. And anytime I made a decision that was a selfish decision or what I would look back on as a wrong decision or anything like that, I knew what it was. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I never wavered from knowing like, this is right. This is how, what I should be doing. This is what I believe. Um, and I just see God's grace through all of it. I just see the reason that we trust in him is that we are imperfect we are sinners he forgives us he loves us uh he saves us and i have seen that demonstrated over and over and over and the need for that <laughs> in my own life so um again i am on a journey of imperfection um but just every every day you know just something brings me back to the fact that man i need him i need his grace his forgiveness his peace. And I'm so thankful for it. Um, and, and just, just blessed, um, to, to have had that from a young age. I think that's awesome. And, you know, when you said what you said, you know, there's, uh, I mean, there's, uh, I remember the day, I remember the hour when Jesus <laughs> met me with the Holy Ghost power and they did that song. Just, yeah. but, you know, we all have been there young or old, but it is just something I was talking to servant leader, um, Addie Lees yesterday. She's at Kilgore she was saying the same thing. She was like, you know, even at a young age, I didn't understand in terms of why I felt what I felt, but mm -hmm. that was, was something that I had never felt before. I understood and I knew exactly yeah. who this Christ man was and what he was trying to lead me. Mm -hmm. to. And it felt different. It felt free. I yeah. used to carry things on my own. And now this person came to say, cast your cares on me. There's mm -hmm. many in my life that care and love me, but they don't want my cares. Right, right, exactly. They say they want them, okay? They may exactly. say, I got you, but sometimes that load get heavy and I can assure you, everybody mm. has a breaking point to what yep. they carry. But here's this man that says, I got you. Mm. Cast all your cares, not some, not the ones you don't want. Cast all your cares on me because simply I care for you. Yes. Not because you're my favorite, not because, although I say people all the time, I'm Jesus' favorite. But <laughs> anything extra you can have it with Brooke I just truly believe that I laugh all the time I tell people I just feel like when I pray people are like hey shh, turn down everybody else real quick servant leaders calling so you know y'all can dispute me on that but I, I love it. Really believe that okay <laughs> I <laughs> love I, that's the thing he makes us all feel that way I mean that's, yes. that's so cool like we he, we should feel that way because that's that's who he is and that's the cool power uh you know that he has for we sure absolutely i love for it sure. i love it <laughs> so i'm awesome. telling you right now so you know you need i tell people like, let me just let me pray on that for you real quick because i got you you know he'll put mine on top real quick but mm. i think you said it so eloquently and it, and it made so much sense and i'm attached i always used to say it's so amazing how we can't trust perfection when you mm. really about that right there is nothing else in this life it can come close right you know you take a look I got lice all over here to my left and 99 point whatever you uh, know all these yeah. things and it's like 90 this you know this is 99.9 percent .9 efficient but there is nothing in life in this world that is perfect but mm. him and yeah. I laugh because we'll take a medicine not think about it my hair hurt let me pop this excedrin you don't yeah. know nothing you just know that's excedrin migraine and I need it for this migraine you know well yeah. how Playing, you do this all the time. Uh, yeah, same thing to make you scared. But we help them. Sometimes we don't even see the pilot, right? And it takes on and takes off. We have not yeah. even seen him. None the wise. We just heard a voice and we trust it, right? But here's this man that's perfect, perfection. 
mm-hmm. people and we have a hard time trusting. And so I used to always, and I still do um, to the point where I got a trademark. I always say trust perfection, mm. perfection. And so when you wow. said a journey of imperfection, yeah, best part about that though, because when we can understand and admit that we're on a journey of imperfection, it leaves us open mm. to, be, to trust perfection. Absolutely. I can't do it on my own. I love it. I know I, I love can't do it. it. I love it. It's so, I know. And I, and I just, it's so funny in our, in our human nature that we, yeah, like we continue over and over to go this. Yeah. Don't trust it. I can do it this way. If I go around, if I go, you know, like if I do it, it'll be a no, but I, I just love those moments where he brings us back, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, and, and there's no, like, there's no shame in it anymore for me. Like I just have learned, like, this is, uh, you know, it's going to happen and I'm working every day to, to, to just trust, you know, mm-hmm. and, but those moments where we bring back and it's like, all you got to do is trust perfection. That's, that's it. It's so I'm telling you. It's that's so it. Freeing. It's so, it's such a piece. And you're just like, whew, you know, thank, you know, thank you. And, and it is, it's those moments where you, you come back to it and it's like, yes, oh, love it. It does. I love it. And, and granted, yeah. you know, to the listeners now and later, I'm here to tell you, I'm not saying that it is something that is always the easiest thing to do, oh, but right. it's freeing. And the more you, that's the thing, the more you trust perfection, the more you start to realize that that's really all you need to lean on. Yes. Know me and listen to pod. They know I love Christine Kane. I make no apologies for how much I mention her because bro, I'm telling you, I tell everybody she's gonna come on here, right? I'm, I'm yes, yes. Let you come on here. I believe and, it. And I, but I love that because she always says before she speaks on her podcast, she says, "Impossible is where God starts. Mm. Mm. Miracles <laughs> are what God does." And when, y'all, <laughs> when I sat and thought about it the first time, I was like, "Let me wind that back, right?" <laughs> impossible to the human mind yes be done yes i love impossible it. to the imperfect the imperfect people to imperfection says it just can't happen mm-hmm. you're telling me that the very thing that i and my own might cannot do cannot achieve cannot ascertain here's this person that's where he starts not right. where, not in the middle that's where he starts and that blows mm-hmm. mind every time and she right. stands to say impossible is where he starts because we have to leave he has to leave no doubt that it was him yeah you know, yes, yes things and yes. we think yep i did that yeah. exactly from everything i've done i am the reason i became the <laughs> right exactly that what we do and right. I, that's oh, yeah. what we do we're it so quick him. to be like yeah i yeah i did it it was i me. did that right and, <laughs> and, that. and it's amazing because only he, like we said earlier, can orchestrate how he did that. I know. Make Brooke, I had to create a place, Beauty for Ashes. I had to allow Coach Sue to step away for reasons mm-hmm. we don't want her to have to endure, but I need to orchestrate this really quick because I need Brooke to see exactly what this is going to look like when I hand it over. Yes. And yes. I need Coach Sue to come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because yep. I need her to come back so that when Brooke moves back over six inches, mm-hmm. different light. Yes. Because when I give it to her, she's going to be head in charge. She's going to be front row seat. And I need her to understand and see some of the things I needed to see to take the charge. Yeah. So amazing. And all the things that he's, you know, not only in the, all those situations doing for me, but in all uh, in coach Sue's life, in the lives of our players and the life, you know, everybody that was yeah. involved in all of those things. It's just so amazing to think about how he's working it all for the good and to teach us and all of that. And, and like you said, like it, yeah, it, we get to that. He starts at the point where there's no, there can be no doubt that he's the one doing it again. That's just, that's so freeing for me. I don't want it to all be on me. I don't want to deal with impossible and have no hope, you know, like, I just, I don't want to live like that. And, um, and that's why I'm just so glad that I have the faith that I do in him and how he operates because what, you know, the alternative is just, so just hard to think about. I don't want to live like that. 
I want to have, I want to be able to rest in that peace that it, that passes any understanding. Come on now. Come on now <laughs> I love it. And you know, even in that peace, right. That we learn to rest in and even in understanding that all things work together for the good of them of him, those storms come and mm-hmm. I'm every time on the pod, because I want people to understand that there, there's no prejudice to storm, right? Mm. Even in being God's favorite, right? There's still storms that I have to endure, right? So I just want you to understand that even in favoritism, he needs me to learn some things too. When that storm comes, you know, we're down here in Florida. We know how this thing rolls, you know, hurricane season rises up. And what do we do? The meteorologists will tell us all the time on WCTV and WTXL, hey, storm's coming. Hey, just letting y'all know on this date, the storm is coming through and we will wait. We will wait. We will wait. We won't go to the store. We won't prepare. We won't do anything. And then the night before the storm comes, we're racing the Walmart. <laughs> the water's gone. The batteries are gone. Right. You know, I, that. Brooke, yes. I say this to other people, but she feels me. She is down here with me. She feels me. And so in that, that is how our world works, right? Where that storm of life is not going to come tap you on the shoulder and say, look, I know you just got this new appointment. So I'm going to give you about a week and then I'll come back. It's Mm -hmm. coming. Yes. So my mom and my grandmother used to always tell me, they would say, baby, you need to make sure that word stays in your heart. You Mm -hmm. need to make sure that when the storms come, you always have in prepared that umbrella, that coverage is there. So when those storms come, you know, and I'm not asking you to go word for word and have it down like that. What is that scripture or, you know, that piece of scripture that you hold on to when it's like, oh, hold on. Let me take a step back. God, I know you. Said it. What's that one for you? I really I think it's the one that that you that we've been talking about. I mean, this whole podcast, it's that he works it all for the good that. And again, that's for some people, that's like a just like a good luck charm almost. I love yeah. how we made the emphasis this whole time for those who love him, you know, mm-hmm. like there is, it is not just a rosy, you know, just if you believe then everything's just going to be okay. It's all going to work out like the storms. Um, they're necessary, like you said, to teach us. And, and I, my pastor, I go to city church and, and pastor Dean, oh, and nice. Sarah, he always says, he's like, don't get it twisted. Like when you choose to follow Christ, your life gets harder. Like Come on. It, it's like your life becomes, it, it is not an easy road. It, you have to count the cost. Like it is the best road. And, and he, he leads us to the best thing, but choosing every single day to follow Christ is not an easy decision. Like it, it's the easiest thing to do. Like it, there is nothing that you have to, like, all you have to say is, come into my heart. All you, it's so easy to do, but then from there on, mm, it's going to be hard. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be hard. And, and if if that's, you know, and, and so that's what I always, I love that reminder. I mean, he says it almost every week. It's like, I love that reminder that this is not about like making life easy or the path smooth or anything like that, but that there is a plan. He is working it all for the good, for those who love him. It is worth it. That's what my, it's like, it's worth it. That's what we try to tell our players. If y'all will do the hard things, y'all will put it all out there and trust and work and and go through the hard moments and feel like you can't go any further and still keep pushing and still believing it will work. It will be so fun at the end. It'll be worth it. And that's, and, and that's exactly what it is in our lives. Like, it's all working together for a purpose. And, and so that's what I lean on. Like just exactly what you're saying. It's so cool just to have that confirmation that, and that you keep pointing out for those who love him, like, it's not just a good luck charm. It does. It comes at a cost in terms of choosing to follow him, to love him. And I think that's the, that's the other piece. And the other extension to that is not only for those that love him. The other extension to that is also the last part of that that says that are called according to his purpose. Yes. Right? And so based off what you just said, which is so amazing, you mentioned the simple fact that when I accept Christ, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yes, 
It's exciting. It's fun, right? We remember the feeling. Yeah. Now, my grandfather used to say, we got to work in the vineyard. Yeah. <laughs> so I think about when you have those recruits, right? Mm-hmm. So fun. Like they did my little I'm committed poster and now sign poster. Right. Now I've gone and I took the photo shoot, right? And I've done all of these things. Right. Wait, wait. Now I'm on now I'm on track at 5 a.m. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in the weight room. Hold on. You ain't say all this work. I was gonna have to do that. Right. Hold on. This is not all glitz and glamour anymore. But mm. The mm. more and more you wake up, the more we know that. I hated the weight room. I'm be honest. I was a beast, but I ain't like to go in there, right? But what <laughs> in the, the more I didn't, and any of my coaches that are listening, they know I'm not telling them anything they've never heard. I'm gonna get it done, but my motivation is because I did not want to be in there. But yeah. every single week that passed, what ends up happening? I grow stronger. It becomes easier, right? It mm. doesn't become like the easiest walk, but I grow stronger for battle. I understand why we're doing this regimen, but now that we're in the NCAA tournament, I get it. Now that these 40 minute games, these 10 minute quarters and coach needs me to stay in there and I didn't get a break. I get it. And so we're called according to his purpose. Right. And we're doing how hard it is. That's when all things continue to work together for the good. You know, that's golden. Exactly. Exactly. It's so good. It's uh, and that's what I love about basketball. Like it, it relates so much to life. Like the le- that's why it's mm. such a good teacher. You know, basketball is is that it, it teaches us about life. It teaches us all these things that are that are that just help us on our journey outside of the court. You know, and and that's it's so true. Like if you will go through the hard stuff. <laughs> there's a reward at the end there's a reward at the end and the greatest example of it is is our faith and, and what we have to do as walking with faith and in this like the reward is at the end yes. um and along the way we're blessed like there's i mean there's a million rewards along the way too but the greatest reward is at the end being with him and see so. that's the part right you know we know this to be true and i love when i hear this analogy but we all know there's games on every schedule. It happens. Sometimes you're going to be the team that's always going to be at the top. And sometimes it's a wave. You're going to be rebuilding. But there's yeah. always a team on your yeah. schedule, no matter how high and how low you go. We as coaches, we don't like them. But it's almost, you don't want to say a guarantee, right? We know that's not a case in sports. Right. Anything can happen, right? Shout out to St. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yes. But in that, there's always games that, for the most part, you know that you'll probably be, you know, more successful, easier than other games. I word it that way. And so in those moments, in those moments, when we take a look at that, I tell my girls, it's so funny how confident you all are when, when that game comes up, how (laughs) y'all practice, you know, that week before that game comes up, like the confidence, the swag you have, how hard you go, how relaxed, how you can smile and laugh, like everything, like we got this, I'm confident this game comes tomorrow, we got it, right? Yeah. Imagine as in Christians, the word is there. It's true if you read it. You yeah. know, it doesn't hide the end from you. It's, right. Right, newsflash, he told you, in the end, we win. Now, granted, the journey yeah. is there. As you said, this journey mm-hmm. of infections to get there, those, yeah. those moments and those are the times where we can't truly explain or understand how he's going to navigate us there. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Uh, who was it? Jeremy Foster. I love him. I listen to him yeah. all the time. He is with uh, what is his church? Um, it just escapes me now. It'll come to me. After yeah, I don't know. But yeah. he was sitting there talking, and he said, "It's amazing. I don't like following people." He says, "I follow the GPS." He said, "I don't care." Someone said, "Just because mm. right around the corner, I got it." He said, "No, I'm gonna follow the GPS." Yeah. He said, and then that one day. Mm. Someone said, hop in the car real quick. We're going to go to this spot, this new spot. Just follow me. He said, and they were moving so fast. I didn't put the address in the GPS. He said, and then what happened? Mm. They quickly turned. I lost them. You know, they went a different route that I wasn't ready to go and didn't know. I got lost. I got behind Mm -hmm. the light. I got lost. He said, and if we can just continue to trust the GPS, our God provisioning system, Mm -hmm. if we continue to Mm -hmm. trust the GPS, you're not going to get lost. We get right. lost when we move because we got it. 
We get lost when we say, I know the way to get there. I don't need the GPS, right? But then what happens in there? Uh, road close. Road yep, close. exactly. Yep. Reroute. And then yep. when it's time to reroute, that's when, like we're talking about it again, and that's when we go, okay, God, I need you. Yes, exactly. I'm everywhere my way first, but now I'm lost. Please come on. Just imagine what it would be like. If we came into that life and said, let me turn my GPS on when I step mm-hmm. out of bed, I you know. got it. Mm-hmm. You got it. I know. I know. And that's, it's, it's so much more enjoyable too. Like you can, when you're, you don't have to, like when we're trying to do it on our own, it's so much harder just in terms of you're, you're out on your own. You don't know. You're not depending on anything. You're trying to do it in your own power. And it just, it's after you've done it, tried it that way. And then when you're trusting the God provisional system, like come on here, come on now. You're like, why would I have done it any other way? This was, this, this was just, you're not striving as much. You're not, again, nothing's perfect. Like there's hard ways. Like it's not always easy to trust, but in the end it is, it's, it's easier. And when you just, and just that freedom, I just love that. The freedom of it, of Mm -hmm. feeling like I don't have to have it all figured out. I don't have to just continually question like, why is this happening this way? I do question like, why is this happening? But then I, oh, when I'm able to get back to, because there's something greater going on that I don't understand. I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay, I can continue to move forward, (laughs) you know? And it's just the freedom in that is, is so, it's such a blessing. It's such a blessing. For sure. It is. (laughs) And you know, it, it comes with building our Mm -hmm. faith. And it comes with sharpening our iron so we can be ready to sharpen others. And it comes with going through. It comes with falling down, right? It comes with, and, and I tell my girls all the time, it's okay to fall down. That's not the problem. The problem right. you have is when you refuse to get back up. Yep. Right? That's the problem for me, right? The character is not in falling. The right. character building is in the falling, but it's exactly. all about getting up. Yes, exactly. And so when you stay exactly. down there, right, that is when you miss that. But one of the things about being down there, and I tell people this all the time, Brooke, sometimes he has to put you down there because his direction is up. Mm-hmm. Standing tall and walking straight and walking forward, it's a little bit harder. We forget the yes. <laughs> right? Because now I got this new job and I'm going to get it, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. My bag, I'm going to climb this ladder that I feel is important, right? And I tell people all the time, positions are fine. Mm-hmm. Fine. But in those positions, we can't forget who positioned us there, right? So in the midst of that, though, Brooke, when we are needing to sharpen our iron, we are needing to make sure that we have that word in our heart. The days do happen. Schedules do happen, right? We're not saying that. We know as coaches, things get thrown at us all the time as leaders and ADs and all the different titles that you can have. This Mm -hmm. gets locked up. Right. You know, the phone pops, you know, oh, I forgot that meeting. Right. We go to the gym to stay physically fit. Mm -hmm. We do puzzles and all these different things to try to stay mentally fit. Some of us get a therapist to try to keep that thing balanced. And that's But how do you make sure you stay spiritually fit with Mm -hmm. everything that's going on? How do we work that in there? And I'm guilty sometimes. I'm like, oh, Lord, hold on. My devotion came at the end of the day as opposed to. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but how do you make sure that you stay spiritually fit with everything going on in your schedule? Oh my gosh. That is such a great question. Um, and I am, I like, I'm, I ebb and flow with it like way more. And I can, I can always tell when I'm, I'm ebbing more than I'm flowing with it. You know, you start to see the signs. I mean, I am so thankful for, like I said before, my church, city church. I mean, it's, uh, and, and it's something that, if I can get there, <laughs> I am going to do everything I can to get in our basketball schedule. Like a lot of times we play on Sundays and it's awful, you know, but, um, I just try, you know, the other thing too, this goes back to being a mother, that prayer time that I do before bed with my child, every, like sometimes mm. that's what, that's the, that I, you know, that's the first time that day that I've really yeah. been able to stop. And I'm so thankful for that time. Like if nothing else, I sit prayer time with my child, hearing her pray, then having, then it's my, I always finish with the prayer 
And that time is so precious to me because not only I'm sharing it with my daughter, mm-hmm. but th- it brings me back every single yeah. night now um, for that. So, I mean, you know, that I, the other thing I'll say too, Chelsea, is that I love coaching because it has forced me to be a better person. Like you are constantly being scrutinized and scrutinizing yourself. Like, that's the thing, like as players, players scrutinize themselves, they're hard on themselves. Like as a coach, like you're not only having to think about like what you're doing, but how it's coming across to 12 to 15 other people, like that scrutiny of like reflecting every single day of like, am I getting my message across? Am I saying the right thing to this one, this one, this one, this one, am I doing the right thing? Like coaching helps me to, again, come back to, okay, self-reflection and the realization every day, I cannot do this alone. I can't do it alone. I need my faith. I need to lean on the Lord. I, I can't, you know? And so I'm thankful for coaching that the second, like you were saying, the second you're trying to walk tall and I got this, you get knocked down in the world of sports. I mean, just like that every day. <laughs> So for me, it's just in this career, it's another, it's a wonderful opportunity to just continue to be drawn back. There's never a moment that's the same. I'm always being confronted with another, you know, something crazy happening. What do I go back to? And so the motherhood coaching, it all fits together. It helps me stay strong and in, in, in my, it's stay grounded and and what I know to be true and leaning on what I know I need to lean on to be, to get through. <laughs> I love that. And I think, you know, just like the word said, a pride comes before a fall. Yes. To just ensure, like you said, that we are, you know, continue to be humble, even when there's things out there that, you know, makes us want to say something different when we're being scrutinized, right. When it's like, that's not even how that went and still, yeah. <laughs> right learning to, I think it's a meme out there and I love it. It always says, you don't have to always tell your side of the story. Time. Mm. Yes. Oh, isn't you know? that the truth? Isn't yeah. That the truth? Yes. Yeah. And it teaches you how to be able to just humble yourself and realize he'll fight my battles. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, you're put on the, you're, you're put, you're put out there. I mean, like coaching and playing like a sport, especially, you know, in the, in the, this day and age, like everything is available. Like everybody can see your games. Everybody can see the stats. Like when I played college basketball, pfft, you know, there was a select few that could see yeah. actually what was going on. Like now it's all out there. So, you know, again, that constant feedback and criticism or praise is always there. How are we dealing with it? Um, and that's why I'm thankful for the moments, you know, the, the, the adverse, the, the adversity that comes as much as I hate it, it's going to be there, <laughs> you know, like if you're yep. in this position, if you're in, if you're in sports, if you're playing, if you're coaching, adversity is going to come and what, who are you leaning on? How are you getting through that? And I'm so thankful that I have what I have to get through it with my faith. I love it. I love it. You know, <laughs> this is actually, you open up April. Um, and I laughed. I was telling people, it's not April Fool's. She's really going to come talk to me. <laughs> That's you know? true. <laughs> it is April Fool's like, Day. Oh, my God. This thing's been going crazy and trying to get me on social media all day today. And I'm like, no, oh. no, you know. <laughs> not falling for uh, it. <laughs> that's right. It's right. <laughs> but, you know, I laughed because I watched God's hand at work. And it was crazy because in planning April, it was just the ordinary steps that I take to schedule it out. And it was like, wait a minute. I'm tripping. I got to April 6th and realized that this is the second year of the Servant Leader Coaches Bible Study. Wow. That's so awesome. Crazy. Right. That's Crazy. So wow. Such a God thing. And, yes. and, and I laugh because it never fails. And I'm in those moments and I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, God, who do you want me to reach out to? Who are we talking to this month? Because I tell people, it's not about me. I'm telling yeah. you, ask the so question cool. like, how did you, you know, even got it with you. How'd you get her to say yes? I'm like, oh my gosh. They just oh said yes. Gosh. I didn't do anything, oh right? This oh. is not me. And 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 so in that, he always gives me, he speaks to me, you know, Chelsea, I need you to 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 focus on this. And so for April, I was like, well, what do you want us to focus on? We're entering another year. 
to try to now build up these coaches and these leaders and infiltrate the sports world. And the thing he gave me, Brooke, he said, you know, let's talk about and get their thoughts on what I mean when I say that you need to step out there on that court. You need to step out there and practice at that podium, wherever you go. And because of those times, Brooke, like we just talked about when we're scrutinized, because of those times where things get thrown at us and we're like, wait, hold on. How did I deserve that? Yeah. I mean, when I tell them they need to make sure that they put on the whole armor of God. Mm. You know, of course, nationally, we take a look at that. We know what he says. But for you, just in Coach Layman's terms, how do you make sure when you walk out of the door, right? Mm. After a loss, when you walk out into that press conference, I tell it all the time. So, you know, I'm on high school level. So when we lose, I can I can move and say, don't talk to me. But- <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can say, uh-uh, give me a day. You don't get <laughs> to leave. You have to know that those girls in that last moment, then run that play that y'all worked on all week long. Mm-hmm. And you go out there and take all those questions with the cameras in your face, right? So yeah. all the things involved, right? The highs, the lows, the things outside the lines, the things in the lines, all involved. What would you say to coaches and leaders as they approach their undertaking? it means to put on the whole armor of God mm. and be able to stand. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that's the, the, one of the coolest things about faith and staying grounded in our faith and the word and, and these types of conversations we're having where we have people around us mm-hmm. that are talking about the right things that are encouraging us in the right way with the right things. I'm so blessed to have that in, in, in coach Sue, you know, like she's talks to me about the right thing. She has the perspective and that's what it is. It's the perspective, like after a loss, after a great moment, like still being able to be in the moment and, and, and talk about what happened and, and enjoy what just happened or evaluate what just happened. But with the perspective of what really this is, you know, like the bigger picture, all of that. And I think being able to have perspective (laughs) and, and, and that comes from, like you're saying, the armor of God, I think that gives us, that's what that is for me is staying grounded in what's really matters. What really is important. Why am I really doing this? Mm -hmm. I am doing this to win games. That is what, why I'm paid. (laughs) Right. But (laughs) along with that, like, it's so much more than that before. And, and what I love is that we don't win games if we don't handle all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's really the important stuff anyway, you know, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) the winning games doesn't, as we know, doesn't come down to if I call the right plays or if I put in the right defense, or if I recruit the best players, the most talented, it's all the other stuff. So all of that ties into the perspective that we know that we have of what's most important and the people that are around us telling us the right things. And that's, that for me is, um, you know, what I'm, I'm thankful for that. I know I need every day. That I need to be reminded of when I'm in prayer, doing devotionals, going to church, talk to the people I need to talk or listening to the people I need to listen to. That's, what's going to help me in those moments. Just, keep that perspective no i totally agree with you and i think that in perspective is key yes. right as we're trying to lead and move because you know it is huge because our perspective sometimes is our own truth right and so <laughs> what was whispered to me um within that is to wear the belt of truth um within our guidance when you speak about the perspective i think it's key right especially mm-hmm serving leaders and, and coaches of faith and leaders of faith because we have that perspective because we know who we lean on. Yes. We have our own understanding. We yes. lean what Christ is leading us to be and do. And so I think that's perfect. Yes. No, it's this, oh man, I'm getting so much good stuff. I needed this. Like that's how you <laughs> don't even understand. Like I needed this conversation with you today, Chelsea, just with so much that's going on. And I'm just so, so thankful for everything that's coming up and out of it. It's been, it's been such a blessing. Uh, listen, I'm thankful for you too. And see, you have the, I was saying this other day, I was like, we both, it's not just you and not just me. We both have the uh, upper hand that other servant leaders when they come on, don't have like, I can legit be like, Brooke, where are you? 
are you? I, I need to talk for a second. Where are you? You know, other people can't. Oh, work. seriously. It's like 10 minutes down the road, but. Exactly. I think sometimes, like you said, that that circle is huge. Like being able to have like-minded and like-spirited individuals around you in your mm-hmm you know, that perspective is huge. That thought process is huge. You have to be able to have smooth and, 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 and amazing counsel that's believing and thinking the same way as you, you know, yes. you gotta have people that, you know, after a bad day, after a good day, after whatever, they're going to lead you in the right place because they've been praying for you. Yes. They're absolutely. There because they're not going to tell you from their perspective, they're going to say, I've been talking to God about you and Brooke, this is what he said. I don't exactly. know. If- take that, but it's not me. You can get mad if you want to. He told right. me, here you go. And quite honestly, and truthfully, while I pray for you and I'm in, and I'm in agreement with you, you're going to know we said it because you're praying to the same person I am. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. You know, no, it yeah. makes it. It's so, it's so helpful to have those people around you that you, you trust and you know that they're grounded in the, in the right things and, and what they're saying to you um, is building you up and 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 it's just I I can't especially obviously in low moments I mean the adversity that comes we have to have that I don't know how people do it without that no for sure um this conversation is dope um but of course nationally I do know that you have other things on your plate (laughs) so so before we get you out of here there are two questions that I have to give you um to enshrine you in this servant leader uh, ranking, right? And, <laughs> so we've been talking about battles and storms and things that we must endure, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that's amazing for me, and this will help you too, especially when we try to, you know, get our devotional in, get our spiritual fitness in, and it's crazy. I do what's called my God is devotion. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is is simply when I wake up, I, you know, say thank you for waking me up, but I'll go to the shower, I'll go, you know, to the restroom upstairs and get what I need to get. And the whole while I'm saying God is. Mm-hmm. And the whole in mind for me is that he's so perfect. He's so matchless. He's so limitless that I'm going to keep talking over and over and over so much so that I'm going to block out anything that's maybe stopping me or blocking the belief that I have that he is. And so I'll say God is amazing. God is a healer. God is a provider. God is a protector. And I'm walking through the house saying this. And before I know it, I'm like, girl, you better hurry up. You're going to be late for work. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't get a list, Brooke. You only get one. And so I were to ask you, servant leader, Brooke Wyckoff, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. God is, and I drew a blank. Yeah. How yes. would you feel that blank? God the is. Word, I'm just going to say what's come into my mind the whole time you're talking is faithful. And I don't know why. I mean, I know why that comes to my mind. He's a, he's a, bunch of different things but that is what's come into my mind is that he's faithful and I think that it just goes back to what we've been talking about that he's going to continue even when we don't know why what's happening he is he is faithful to work it all back to to his plan which is for the good and yeah that's what comes to my mind <laughs> I love it he is I'm not even going to extend off of that because we'll be <laughs> but he is faithful even when we don't believe he's faithful mm-hmm. you know, we don't, don't deserve it he still remains faithful right yes. he's not conditional. Yes. yes he is, <laughs> he is. I, I mean it's just funny people can go left and right based off of how you think and feel and what you do and didn't do and he's like i'm i'm here mm-hmm. what's happening to me all the time but i'm still here yep exactly i'm gonna come through regardless yep it's, it's still amazing. here Exactly, And of course, this is the Servant Leader Coaches Bible Study, where servant leadership, leading like Christ, is at the forefront, the middle, and every single thing that we do. So, of course, naturally, it takes on two totally different meanings for so many different people. Mm -hmm. Ask you, Servant Leader, Coach Brooke Wyckoff, Servant Leadership, thank you. Servant Leadership means to me that the people that you serve you put ahead of you every single day. I mean, that's, that's that you put ahead of you. The people that you are serving are the people, the people that you, excuse me, the people that you are leading are who you're serving. And that's, that's what it is, is that you put those that you are leading, those that are quote unquote beneath you, they are above you and you lift them up. 
that's what it means to me. And I, and I just, I love that concept. I wouldn't want to lead any other way. That's how I've been led by coach Sue. She's served me her whole life and her whole life. My, this whole journey, it feels like a lifetime, 25 years. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it feels like a lifetime. Um, but that's what she's done. That's what she's modeled for me. And that's what I hope to be, um, every single day to the people that I lead. I think that's so dope and that's exactly what it is i feel like at the end of the day you have to forgive me i have you can you hang on can you give me a second yep no you're good um i feel that uh, i have some amazing servant leaders in here helping me out so you're good you, you, you're, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry y'all <laughs> so at the I end of the day, it's okay at the end of the day um, we have to continue to remember exactly what you just said in leaving just as the word tells us all the time like if you're going to be a leader if you're going to rule, you have to first serve. You have to be a servant. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think we miss that portion. And so I think you said it best, like, yes, I'm leading you, but I'm the person that's saying, hey, what do you need? Yes. I'm, and that's making sure, you know, that you have everything that you need to now be successful, to catapult you forward. When you leave me, are you better than when you came? Yes. And you said that, And but the, the best part about that is not only did you say that, you do that. Mm. You do that at Florida State with those young ladies. I've watched you and Coach Sue both, right? Just in every realm, be unapologetic about your faith, being unapologetic about he's the one that placed you there. Mm-hmm. And I know that now that his faithfulness, as you said, now that your obedience has allowed you to be catapulted into this position, I know you're going to do well. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you so much. It's just such a privilege to be on here with you. And like I said, this this conversation was right on time for me. <laughs> you don't even know, like it was right on time. So I appreciate you so much. No, for sure. I appreciate you. And of course, before we go, I'm going to cover you. So if you buy your hair, you. yes. Tell me about that. I thank you right now just for what we've seen and what we've heard. I thank you that you allow paths to cross in such a way that you have people saying, how did you get them? How did they say yes? But when we share the same heart, the same servant heart and serve the same man, the great man, he'll align these things. So I ask a special prayer right now for coach that she can just continue to lead the Florida State women's basketball team in the way that you would have her to go, that you would just give her the strength to continue to be the mother that you've called her to be, Lord God, so that she can help mothers like myself and other coaches know that they can do both and they can have both. I ask right now, Lord God, that you just meet every single person at their point of need. We don't even know what they need, but you know, Lord God. But most of all, I ask that you help us to continue be to be lights. Help us to illuminate so that those that may not know you can find you. In your son Jesus' name, we'll always pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome. My favorite line of the pod, servant leader Brooke Wyckoff. You are now a part of the servant leader family. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Yes, for sure. So just know me and Hendrix, your niece, we're going to be representing. Yes, I can't wait. Whatever you need. And I'm just so proud of you. I'm proud to know you and just know you got some people praying for you as you step into your Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. And I am a huge fan of yours. And here, (laughs) whenever you. you need me, whatever it is, let me know. Okay. I appreciate that. And we thank you guys 